sunny, wouldn't they? Both are ready and waiting to scratch those itches and slough those screams. Many thanks for joining us this morning, guys. Speak with either of our experts, please call in on the usual number. We'll also be monitoring your texts and your tweets. Looks like we've already got our first caller, Josh, on line one with an embarrassing question about elbows. Morning, Josh, you're live to the nation. Morning, Stupid. I've dry, flaky patches of skin on my elbow. They itch and they keep me crack and bleed. Is it eczema or psoriasis? Thanks for your question. Guys, what advice could you give to Josh? Well, that's a very good question, Josh. As both conditions present relatively similar symptoms, both conditions are a form of dermatitis. Eczema means to bubble up and psoriasis means an itching condition. Symptomatic, the eczema is the often an inflammatory response, the result of an allergic reaction to moisture, soaps, detergents, or even foods. Psoriasis is the production of excess skin, often in response to trauma, such as friction, and hence that's the reason it's found on the outer joint surfaces. This leaves your skin dry, scaly, and liable to crack and bleed. Either way, Josh, I'd get it checked out by your GP, just to find out for sure, and start getting treatment on it. Good morning, Josh. The main difference between the two is location. Psoriasis tends to occur on the outside joint surface, such as, in your case, the elbow. Eczema, on the other hand, is usually more commonly found on the creases of the joints, such as inside of the elbow or the back of the knee. However, in extreme cases, both eczema and psoriasis can appear all over the body. Thanks for that. Uh, best of luck with that one, Josh. Uh, plenty of calls coming in. Next we have James on line two. Hi, James. Where's your itch and how can we scratch oh, it? Hello, Sue B. Um, <laughs> I'm in the middle of my university finals and I've just developed eczema. Um, I don't like the sound of the steroid creams. Are there any other drugs I can have? Mm, that, that's a hint for the ladies. What would you guys recommend? <laughs> Well, firstly, James, let me reassure you, using steroid creams appropriately and under supervision is a safe and effective treatment. The likelihood of the side effects occurring is directly linked to the strength of the cream, where it's applied, the age of the patient, and the condition of your own skin. So all of these factors are taken into account when the steroid cream is prescribed. If potent topical steroids are used for a long period of time, without adequate supervision, skin thinning can occur and it should only be used if prescribed by your doctor. There are also special bandages that can be used to help moisturize your skin and protect the skin from further damage and scratching. Some of these bandages contain emollient, and some of them even contain topical steroids. These should never be used on infected skin. And besides, James, you should always ask a dermatologist to show you how to apply these products properly. Morning, James. Both air conditions are an effect of several forms of dry skin should always keep your skin well moisturised. There are all sorts of non-cosmetic creams, ointments and lotions. Each can be used depending on the individual's reaction to the ingredients and the severity of the eczema. A certain degree of trial and error is necessary as everyone's skin reacts differently. You can also get moisturising soaps and bath oils. These products help reduce the symptoms and preventing dry skin. Well that clears up for you soon James and uh, best of luck with the finals mate. Um, talking about itching, doctor, could you just scratch my back there for me? Smashing. Over line three, where Freddie wants alternatives. Uh, I really don't like the sound of steroid creams. Uh, what are the complementary alternative options? Well, good morning, Freddie. Well, there are alternative ways of treating psoriasis, both directly and indirectly. However, at this stage, it's difficult to measure their success. Conclusive test results are not yet available. There is no one treatment out there that is a miracle cure. But that isn't to say that alternative treatment types don't work for some individuals. Acupuncture, herbal medicine, homeopathy, Reiki, emotional freedom technique, and I believe cognitive behavioral therapy. Just to list a few. Those could benefit individuals. Can osteopathy help? Uh, hi, Freddie. Um, as a direct treatment, osteopathy is by no means a cure. However, in terms of com complementary treatment, it could be used to benefit the patient by improving joint function and health. So if a patient was extreme pain around a particular joint or muscle from acute psoriasis or eczema, a osteopath would help reduce the inflammation through light massage techniques and direct treatments. Well, that helps to balance your yin and your yang, Freddie. Let's try to keep it one question, folks. Plenty of calls to go through this morning. We've got Ben on line four with a question about osteopathic treatment. One for you, sir, Warren Whitby. Hi, uh, Stephen. Can I um, still get osteopathic treatment in my skin? Hi Ben, the answer to that is yes you can. It isn't regarded as a direct treatment for to eczema and psoriasis, but can be very helpful in relieving 
muscle pain and restoring joint health after inflammation associated with psoriatic <coughs> arthritis. It can also support the lymphatic system. <coughs> me. Patients can also benefit from treatments that include the whole body. As long as the air stimulus doesn't in increase itchiness or irritation of the condition, I would, however, be very careful if the patient is suffering a flare-up at this time for both rights and ex ex eczema. The use of oil of water-based ointments and aid moisturizer helps reduce their symptoms. It is important to make sure that the practitioner's hands are thoroughly clean at all times. Well, when treating a patient with eczema or psoriasis, then, it's important to remember the condition is not <coughs> contagious. However, we know that when psoriasis is acute, the cells are already hyperactive, so increasing energy or circulation to that area could aggravate the condition. When eczema is particularly inflamed or cracked, then stretching of this area should be avoided if possible. If there is infection in either case, it is best if the patient is referred to a dermatologist and put on an antibiotic. Thanks, Ben. Sounds like you could do some relief. Um, now we have Anna on line five, a practitioner with a question for the good lady doctor. Hi, Jazz, you're on air to Dr. Wingard. psoriasis and other allergies are indeed on the increase. A team of researchers from Edinburgh University looked at the changing rates of eczema in England between 2001 and 2005 and found a 42% overall increase in the rate of new cases each year. The researchers said that the increase could be partly due to the use of soap and detergents, as well as better awareness and diagnosis of the disease. There was another study focusing on psoriasis uh, done by researchers in the United States, I believe indicating the condition is among older adults is on the increase and it is expected to be rising. The increase could be due to many factors such as genetics, diets, pollution and other environmental triggers such as stress. Thanks for that Anna. Um, have we got time for one more question just about? We've got Daniela here on line six who sounds like she should have gone spec savers. Hi Scooby, I have psoriasis. It's obvious how it affects my skin. Does it affect my body in other ways I can't see so clearly? Good morning, Daniela. Well, it's important to remember, like I've said before, <coughs> psoriasis is not infectious, and increased stress levels may increase the intensity of that condition. Proper management of stress levels, as well as weight, diet, exercise, and blood pressure should help sufferers deal better with this condition. According to Arthritis Today, 6 to 42 percent of psoriasis sufferers will develop pain or stiffness in their joints, which may be a result of psoriatic arthritis, which is an inflammatory arthritis causing pain, swelling, and damage to any joint within the body. This is an <coughs> autoimmune disease that turns the body against its own tissues. While this condition is most commonly associated with joints, it is a systemic condition. That means over time, the characteristic inflammation of the psoriatic arthritis, while affecting the skin, can affect multiple joints and even organs. Good morning, Daniel. How are you? Conventional medicine finds both psoriasis and eczema extremely difficult to treat, so many sufferers turn to alternative, alternatives such as Chinese medicine and acupuncture, which can sometimes have great success. Chinese medicine has very different ways of looking at things and regards the skin like a third lung, so the skin is often uh, treated by acupuncture using the, the lung medium. Without doubt, connections exist that we won't understand yet. Like other holistic practitioners, I listen closely to what patients say about aspects of the condition that they feel are linked, even if the, even if the link cannot be explained. And hopefully one day we'll have a better idea how to treat this difficult condition. Well, I hope that's cleared that one up for you, Daniela. There are clearly plenty of questions and thankfully there are answers. If you suffer from any of these, please, please don't suffer in silence. For more information, take a look at the links on our website. Sally, that's all we've got time for today, folks. I'd like to thank our experts, Dr. Wingard and Stephen Moore. Thank you. Nothing like a good old scratch to start the morning, is there? <laughs> Enjoyed yourselves? Yes, oh, thank you. Fantastic. <laughs> ah, quick one for you, son. You're an osteopath. How many osteopaths does it take to change a light bulb? Please tell me, sir. It depends. <laughs> <laughs> Into the effects of stress and psoriasis and why they're connected, and 
whether you know if there is. Yes, we did. Because of the fact that psoriasis is an autoimmune disease, um, that basically the stress levels that come into it, the more stressed you are, and the incidence of um, the chemicals increasing in your body, with your, or the increase going towards your joint areas into the skin areas, it does kind of, um, it's kind of like a vicious circle. Um, there's a psychological impact of the stress kind of it, where you get a patient who's got psoriasis, and because it's a, it's not a pleasant condition to look at, stress levels do increase, the more stress they become, unfortunately, the worse the psoriasis can get. It's not proven as such, um, but it is, uh, there is a direct link to it. Stress management is important in relation to <coughs> diet and weight management as well as blood pressure and things like that. So it's a combination of factors, not just stress. Any other questions? Great, well that was, that was fantastic, very entertaining. And, um, what, what marks can we add? <laughs> <laughs>